Hello friends, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. There's a lot of creepy, weird stuff going on right now. What are your thoughts? I, I've gotten a tremendous amount of data that indicates the killing of Floyd. I, I know there's a lot of people. I mean, conspiracies always spin out of control, and they go like at 7,000 different levels. And to the point where when the turtle's going across your, your driveway, it's like, it's a conspiracy. Somebody whispered something into that turtle's face. You know, it's like we got to keep it under control. Not everything is a conspiracy. But. I have a lot of information that seems to strongly indicate that the whole George Floyd event was a false flag in the first place, that the police were paid off. I mean, it was like the footage of the actual event. It was almost like the police officer was like posing for the film footage. I mean, 10 seconds, it takes three, uh, 10 minutes, it takes three minutes for the human body to be deprived of enough oxygen to die. Three minutes. Mm -hmm. You want 10. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's too much that just, it looks to me, and there's a lot of data supporting this, that this was a false flag. It was, it was the same people that are funding Antifa. I have videos, live Live um, interviews of people walking through the crowds, interviewing the protesters in person, and many of them coming forward and saying, oh, yeah, we're getting paid big money. Big money. They're getting checks to go out and protest. These are people that are unemployed. And they're getting thousands of dollars to show up at these. And guess where that thousands of dollars is going? Belgium, France, all these other cities where there are outbreaks and riots. And guess what? The percentage is still less than 1% of the population of any given city. It's a tiny, tiny little group. But they're being paid. I don't know. What were your thoughts on that? I, I don't know. That's what I'm seeing, and I'm getting a lot of data indicating. I don't believe that George Flo Floyd is alive because I apply the principle of quid bono. A lot of people think he's still alive. Oh, look, here he is in this video. Look, he's alive. And I'm like, no, no. Now, Epstein, I can see them keeping Epstein alive because he was part of the club. But Floyd wasn't a part of anybody's club. And it would be tri it would be trivial for them to say to the police officers in a dark, smoky room, I will pay you two point five million dollars if you kill this man. But you got to let us film it. And then we will make a deal and get you out of prison early. And you will be a very wealthy man. I can see them cutting that deal with all those police officers and setting this whole thing up. And there's a lot of data out there, but I cannot see them keeping Floyd alive. There would be no point in it. Nobody would benefit by doing that, and the risk would be too high. So um, uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? And then we'll jump over to Joy real quick. Sure. That's a really good question, and I think this is something that people should consider with everything that is going on because you know what you see in the news is not what is – really really going on and people should ask questions and with regard to Floyd it seems that uh, his father was a Mason and was connected in some manner to the Freemasons his brother made a post where you know he spoke about and even showed the regalia of his father and that he wanted to uh, follow in his footsteps and to honor his memory and so just like with uh the Trayvon Martin the the George I uh, forget his last name but um the the guy that had killed Trayvon Martin his father was also a mason a judge and connected wow. to the to the brotherhood in some manner and so it, it shows to me that there's more going on than what is being Set or being understood, and with regard to you know the false flag, I mean we never know anymore whether something is really um, an event that happened and just randomly 
came about or if it was just completely staged and orchestrated. I mean, right. th- that's how just uh, weird the times are. I mean, you know, who who really even knows anymore? Um, ever since the whole thing with the Sandy Hook and all these different schools and all these, you know, players and actors and crisis actors, I mean, we we just really don't know anymore. But the fact that his father had Freemason um, connections is certainly suspicious. And um, again, the whole thing with the the uh, controlled opposition, and as Dr. Joy had mentioned earlier, uh, the heightened tension, uh, the civil, what they want to see as far as civil war on the streets, uh, racial uh, division, riots, um, this has all been orchestrated. And even like, you know, going back to the French Revolution, it was upstaged in the same manner. It's even spoken about in the protocols of how they led and created uh, the revolution to to overthrow uh, the monarchy in those particular places um, and to just control it covertly in other manners. And so, yeah, I, I am suspicious. And there is something, again, weird and more to uh, what's going on. But again, people should become familiar with the Illuminati Secret Covenant as well as the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. Because in reading and studying that, and another text called the, um, The Occult Technology of Power, reading these three um really quick reads as well but you know they are the elites speaking about and driving and writing about uh, to their inner circle about how and what they need to do in order to foment and to create this controlled opposition and also with things like um, you know the whole thing of Albert Pike's vision the, uh, the need for three global wars as pretext to um, bring in world government. All these things are planned literally hundreds of years in advance and are being led in a particular manner. And, you know, again, we see this all unfolding. I'll just read this really quickly. It says in the third protocol, when the hour strikes for our sovereign Lord of all the world to be crowned, it is these same hands which will sweep away everything that might be a hindrance there too you know and it talks about how they need an economic crisis and that they're going to plan for it at a certain particular time and that they're going to use this economic crisis to shut down everything and a universal economic crisis whereby we shall throw upon the streets whole mobs of workers simultaneously in all the countries, it says here in Europe, but of course this is in the world. Ours they will not touch because the moment of attack will be known to us and we shall take measures to protect our own. And so, you know, again, writing about these things well in advance and we are living in these times where these things are now here upon us. Sister Joy? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we are being subliminally brainwashed to accept this paradigm shift. And what is happening is that we don't realize that they're shifting the worship of God into allowing people to tolerate the worship of Satan. No different than we have seen where they wanted to bring the Confederate monuments down, but yet they put a, a big statue of Baphomet up where right. people... Literally know, and, and like Zen says, and we studied this and written about it, both of us, is that these secret societies have had this in their uh, plans for a very, very long time. And the intention of those protocols to bring about a time period in which there's complete lawlessness and they have control of everything is for one purpose 
Uh, and, and, you know, when I wrote about that in my book, Eden, it was just that during this particular period of time, when you get close to the coming years uh, of the apocalypse, you're going to find that being a dedicated Christian becomes increasingly more and more difficult. So if you look at it, followers of people that believe in God are going to be more harassed, more imprisoned by the world. We are seen as being backward, stupid, blind to progress, politically incorrect, that we don't, we're not tolerant, we're biased, we stand in the way of progress, and that we really are the minutes to completing the new world order. So when you look at it, faithful Christians right now are the only thing that's standing in direct opposition to the new age quest that they're wanting to be, and that's to be God-like themselves. And when you look at the amount of liberals that are out there that have promoted this legalization of abortion and using aborted babies for flesh experiments and uh, mixing the genetics of plants and species and, and actually stopping really the study of absoluteness and then allowing tolerance of allowing a person to just kind of do whatever you want to do because you're going to respect their rights, even whether they've been criminals. Like we have seen these people that have caused problems and then have a huge you know, ceremony on TV of the best of the best, but yet that person was not a, a, a true man, a good man, but yet we see innocent people being killed that were good people, you know, good police officers, good family, never have done anything wrong. Nobody has any kind of even a service for them. So when you look at this right now, there's too many Christians in the world, and they're looking in any possible way. The seeds of Satan, like I say, have been looking to control us, kill us, slowly brainwash us into accepting their line of thinking. And it's getting to be where there's more of them than us. And when that happens, we're setting that stage up that uh, controlling people is like controlling a, a pack of dogs. The people that try to intervene with that are going to get killed. Right now, when you start defunding police forces and they don't have enough money now and the people that you're getting in the police forces are just needing a job and you don't really have the people who are dedicated, who wanted to be a policeman all their life and studied it and that kind of thing, and you're just picking up people because you've got to have them, the chances of those people not being able to react like a professional person they're not able to pay them like a professional person. You're going to see more and more where you're going to get the bad guys in line with getting into those jobs to do nothing but set up on the other side. And that's the best way to do When you infiltrate an army and you get a traitor within your group that can turn around and use your group that's trying to do good to make it look bad, it's got like one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, that's kind of what we're seeing. And so it's a, it's a real concern to me that this is manifesting itself like it is at the end of days. It is truly the one thing that I think I was waiting to see that would be a fulfillment that I, I, I actually believe would happen, you know, that would get so, so bad. And to me, um, this continues and it can't be brought under control. And if it's allowed and people start doing this and vigilante to get out there and then, then you get groups and packs of people who – go in and break in and take and, uh, and and then you start shooting everybody on the street and there's nobody, there's not enough cops to handle those kinds of things, then we get into a world that's totally uh, ruthless, that's totally lawless. And, uh, and that's what's prophesied at the end of the day. And, and we're definitely living that. And I think, you know, that's the escalation of something that truly is an end time fulfillment, that that type of society uh, it's going to happen, and we're seeing it every day taking its uh, effect across the world. It's not just in our country. It's everywhere. And um, lawlessness is from one person, and that's Satan. And he's after our souls, and he's going to go after whoever he can get, and he's going to hurt a lot of people. And Christians are the people that stand in the way. I mean, if there is a catching away, a rapture event that I truly believe will happen, when, when, the, when the bride of Christ is taken out of here, this lawlessness that we are kind of trying to keep it in order will escalate to the point that this will be one hell on earth if you're left here to deal with it. Oh, yeah, that, that may very well be the understatement of, <laughs> I mean, man, oh, day. Because, you know, considering how, like, I, I know I'm very blessed. I know that you are too, and, and Zen as well, you know, and, and, and what and how we serve the Lord in the sense that we get exposure to 
places all around the world and input from people that we interact with um, that is beyond that of the normal person out there, you know. And um, I, you know, I know a lot of people out in that Pacific Northwest area that is getting pummeled by all this stuff, you know, um, that, it, you know, it's really affecting their daily life in a very negative way. And, um, yeah, it's, it's what really alarms me is I, you know, while I'm not really into math, never have been, you know, I'm not like, you know, a lot of people are pretty good at math. I'm, I'm like, not, you know, I had to get like tutoring when I was in engineering school because I didn't remember my basic algebra, you know, laws. But anyway, um, but when you do apply just very basic math to everything that's happening, including the conflicting reports that have come out of multiple sources, including the WHO, including the CDC, um, a conclusive report that after, you know, after everybody called fire in the theater with COVID-19 and all the countries were on lockdown, then the World Health, Health Organization, or it may have been the CDC, I have the report, I save them all in the show notes, came out and updated their um, morbidity numbers, and it was only 0.26 What's worse is that the, um, you know, there was a leader in I think it was Zambia or I forget which African country, but he got enraged. So did the uh, parliament in, in Italy. They realized they were being lied to. So they were being paid for every person that, um, you know, on Medicare or Medicaid that is diagnosed with COVID-19, the doctor who did the diagnosis and entered the HIPAA code, receives $13,000 in cash. For every Medicare and Medicaid patient that is placed on a respirator by the recommendation of their doctor, that doctor receives $34,000 in cash. The HIPAA codes that are being, that the doctors are being told to place on the diagnosis certificates and into the computer systems, they are being specifically commanded by the authorities to list anything and everything that might even smack look like could be maybe might have been could have been should have been might have been yeah so basically uh-huh. then the CDC after after all this hell has broken loose across the entire world and it's too late because fire has been called in the theater people are being killed by the rush to the door the cities are locked down the world is in total panic. And then the CDC comes out and says, uh, only kidding. Morbidity rate is 2.6%. But that's only 2.6% of the people who really have it. The fact is that that every single animal and every single human has a form of a coronavirus variant in their body today. Now, COVID-19 is a bioweapon, and it was created in conjunction with um, the United States military um, and China. Okay, And Obama, through the National Institute of Health, funded the Wuhan, specifically the Wuhan lab, over $3.7 million in the year 2015. All right, so Fort Detrick's bioweapons lab worked in conjunction together with Wuhan. But this is all black ups. These are, these are unacknowledged special access programs that even the president of the United States does not get access to. They use what's called plausible deniability. And they say, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. President. There was no collusion between the, the 4G trick and the – you have to be an insider blowing the whistle to even find out about these things. You can you, – you can, uh, when China came forward and publicly stated worldwide that, they, that it was the United States military that brought them the, 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 uh, the, the COVID-19 variant, I was highly suspicious because I know that the United States of Babylon the Great. 
And I know that it is, that it is the, the power structure that will be used and the money center that will be used to usher in the very end and the collapse of the world. I know that when they set off the nuclear bombs like they have in the movie Jericho, the TV series Jericho, which is totally prophetic, when they set off the ground-based nukes in this country, that that is going to be coming. It's going to be another 9-11 inside job. But they're going to use foreign specifications and foreign parts so that they can blame somebody else. It's going to be another false flag. I know all these things. I've been studying for 10 years. And the prophecies from God's prophets and people getting visions and dreams of these things happening for more than 10 years. So we know it's coming. But um, but anyway, when I look at all of these things, I'm like going, man, I'm blown away when you use your calculator and you look at the numbers. By the way, numbers that are supported after the fact by the World Health Organization. WHO came out and publicly stated after fire was called in the theater that masks do nothing to reduce the spread of COVID-19. But it wasn't until after fire was called in the theater. It was too late. All the businesses were going under. The farms were being devastated. The food supply and food chain on a global level was being destroyed. And we had total anarchy and chaos. Then enter George Floyd to top it all off. So they've given enough ammunition to the anarchists to keep this fire running for a long time. And as long as the satanic flesh-eating baby killers out there are running CNN, MSNBC, and it's God's grace. It is God's grace that Rupert Murdoch, who you and I, Zen, both know is a shapeshifter. Because we shared each other. We, we I remember back when Rupert Murdoch was at one of the Bilderberg meetings and the photography, the shot was taken of him through the through the limo window and you could see his hand and it wasn't human. Remember we shared that that yeah. Yeah. Yeah, photograph that. years ago? Yeah. So mm-hmm. Rupert Murdoch surpri- not maybe not so surprisingly, because we know that God is in control. Rupert Murdoch ultimately quote, sells, end quote, and I do mean quote, sells, end quote, sells it to Disney. And we are like, well, Disney's of the devil too. Yes, they are, but it's degrees of darkness. It's degrees of darkness. So all of a sudden, Fox no longer is parroting everything that CNN is saying. And, and I'm like looking at both screens in my office going, wait a minute, the headlines aren't synchronized anymore. Something strange has happened. And then I discovered that Disney now owns Fox. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly Fox is now taking a completely separate side. Laura Ingram on the Ingram angle, which has never been one of my favorite people, but that's okay. She actually announced to the world on Fox News live that everybody should read Psalm 91. I'm 58 years old, and I have never seen the mainstream media ever say anything like that before. And I used to be a junkie. I would come home from work and flip the news on, and it would stay on until I went to bed at 1030 every night for years. <laughs> and you know what? Never has that ever happened. We are, we, this country is being set up right now for massive civil war which many anointed prophets of the Lord have seen. Dimitri Dudeman in his book, Through the Fire, 1983 vintage. David Wilkerson, 1973, the the vision that he had and some subsequent visions that were later. All this stuff was brought forward to us already. It's all out on the Internet right now, and it's happening today. And you're right, Joy. You nailed it. The fact that this is global in scope, get this. I got a spam I, – I block. I have electronics on my phone, special apps that I paid for in some cases that block phone spam, and one of them slipped through. The person left a voicemail, and they said, my name is John, and I would like to get your opinion on whether or not you think that the things that are happening across the world are related to – and then he quoted a Timothy scripture, blah, blah, blah. And I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, I communicated with the individual, and he said that, well, our normal ways of spreading the gospel 
have been cut off for now. So we're going to the directory. Because I said, how did you get my number? Because I can't understand how he got my cell phone number. I'm still struggling to figure that out. And um, anyway, long story short, I, I made some changes to my Facebook settings because the privacy settings are not synchronized from the Internet, from a regular web browser to your phone. So warning out there, everybody, if you think that you set your privacy settings on Facebook properly, warning, if you did it on your browser on your PC, it does not carry over to your Facebook app on your cell. You have to make the changes on both applications separately. Warning. So anyway, I discovered it, but I'm like, folks are waking up. God is using this. Our Father is using this event to awaken to awaken people that have not been awake. Even though the numbers mathematically spell out one simple reality that we're being played like a fiddle. And um, But the scariest part of all is that millions of people worldwide are believing the lie. That is... Mm-hmm. Very troubling. If that's any indication of what we have coming in the near future, we need to really prepare and buckle up. Sister Joy? Or, oh, wait. I agree. Was, I agree was, totally was, that. Uh, oh, okay. I, I just agree totally that oh, yeah. uh, uh, and, this is all sorry, planned, it's all set up. I, okay, amen. And um, Zen, did you want to comment on this? Sure, I'll just make a quick comment. Um, with regard to the setup, yeah, this is to you know take us into chaos uh, because the whole thing with the COVID nineteen, we know that the vaccine is coming, and who knows how that's going to affect people. But I do believe that it's going to create illness and disease in some manner that is unforeseeable and unexplainable. To those that again are ignorant of the new world order and that don't have idea as to the repercussions of taking such a vaccine um, and also that the whole thing of you know the uh, with so many people now being out of jobs even though things are um, uh, starting to normalize with work and um, you know people being able to get back to paying their bills Still, that three months of putting them, uh, you know, as far as the uh, struggle and all of the credit card debt that they've um, now taken just to be able to survive that month, it really set a lot of people um, back into where they are going to be struggling for a long time to catch back up and to get back uh, on top of things. And because of that, it's brought um, a sense of desperation to everywhere in the world that a lot of people um, may never recover from what has just gone down. And I think that a lot of people are going to, um, you know, again, with the $30 trillion in debt here, a government can't sustain itself in that manner. And at some point, all that is going to have to be dealt with and contended with as well and all the money that people have just been getting and receiving from government uh all that you know it will at some point have to stop in a manner that government's going to have to restructure and it's going to have to balance budget because there's going to be nobody to give it money to where it could continue over consuming and overspending in the way that it is and it will cost more even to borrow and so you know the peace comes sudden destruction everything being turned upside down Uh, we even see that there was a bill put forth to increase the um the the taxes on ammunition and guns and we're talking like 50 percent and 35 percent on ammunition and so um, protection, people being able to protect themselves if they don't already have you know, firearms to do so or whatever, uh, they're not going to be able to. And they're going to be at the mercy 
of the lawlessness that is coming. Uh, and it's the insanity of, you know, already people don't have enough and are living uh, by um, check to check. And it's just a matter of another COVID um, occurrence or another phase or whatever, even if it's real or not. I mean, they can basically say, oh, everybody quarantine again for another three months. And where's that going to leave people, you know? You, you, you're well, absolutely yeah. right. They're already starting that. They're already pumping up the numbers again. The, the, and, mm-hmm. and the numbers can't be trusted. Anybody that's they, – they, they, oh, uh, they had an administrator not. in Florida, a, a health administrator in Florida that worked for the Florida state government, and this person – revolted, you know, and said, I'm not going to enter those numbers. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, they, they saw, they smelled a rat. They knew it was wrong. They knew it was, mm-hmm. and, and they, and they terminated the person. So, um, and that hit the news. So you can't trust any of it. There was a, like I mentioned, the leader it, 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 over in, in Nigeria, or I forget, I could look it up on the internet, but there was a uh, president of a country in Africa who came forward absolutely so angry he couldn't see straight and was yelling into his microphone saying that we took these COVID-19 test kits and we tested a papaya and a goat, and they both came up mm-hmm. net positive for COVID-19. <laughs> 19 and he was infuriated so so we're the numbers you can't believe anything Mm -hmm. you say so they can come out and tell you well the numbers in florida because they let their guard down too soon are now three times higher than they should have been and the herd mentality is life look the um hydrochloroquine Another mm-hmm. thing that they stomped into the ground. There is unbelievable mm-hmm. amounts of evidence that Remsdivir and, and hydrochloroquine kill it. There's also yeah. unbelievable amounts of evidence from reliable scientific sources that have been stomped that heat and humidity kills it and that it has no longevity mm-hmm. whatsoever on surfaces. Yet what do you see Amazon doing? Wearing masks, wiping their hands. I couldn't even get my hair cut without getting hand sanitizer put on. And I'm in one of the most kickback states in the entire country. The guy that was, I was like, dude, I need to get my, you know, he's like, he's holding over the PRL. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need any of that, man. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> then he takes the PRL and he like puts it in front of my face, like dun, dun, dun. And I said, oh, hell, I'll put the PRL on for crying out loud. <laughs> Whatever. Mm-hmm. Play the game. But um, Joy, did you want to go ahead and kind of tie a ribbon on this program? <laughs> Praise God. Well, the thing about it, I mean, what, what we're saying is, is that there's consistency in the fact that we're getting worse. Things are not getting better. Whether it's the COVID, the lawlessness, the pestilence, whatever, things are not getting better. And that's the thing that's so true to the end of days. It tells us it's going to be that, like a woman travail where these things are going to get worse and worse, closer and closer together. So whether it's COVID coming back as a resurgence or where it's a brand new virus, it's going to consistently get worse where more people are affected where things get to the point that they are going to have to mark us. So they've got to get it so bad that we're willing to take a mark of the beast. And I think that's where we're headed either with a vaccination program or some type of something that's going to come down the pike and it's going to set us all up that you've got to have that to be able to buy, sell, or trade. For the mm-hmm. Antichrist to come to power, to put us under uh, a mask, being able to massively control us, we have got to have something on us to be able to track and do. We already know that technology is already there, but because Christianity is constantly fighting against that. So I said, as long as Christianity is here, we're the bad guys. Because the moment we're out of here being able to mark people and do what you want to do to those people, the lawlessness will take over and, and, and Satan will have his people the way he wants them. So we're just right, we're right at the door of seeing all of this come to pass. And I just think it's amazing that the book of Revelation has told us exactly what's going to happen and we are following it to the T. 
Yeah, you you nailed that. Matter of fact, we're 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 snorkeling through the Olivet discourse right now. <laughs> we're like going, hey, oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, persecution against pastors, and you know, I I was telling, I told people a couple of years ago, I said, look, we're not there yet, you know, because there's all these folks out on YouTube that you know are young in their prophetic abilities, and they're saying things, you know that you just kind of know they're not right because they don't line up with the Bible. And I was like, until we start seeing significant persecution of Christians in this country, you can't check that box because Jesus was talking to the whole world when he, when he was talking about that stuff. Right. Exactly. So, worldwide. Correct. It's going to happen yeah. worldwide. That's right. So then, you know, you got people out there going, I think this COVID-19 is the strong delusion of two, or Second Thessalonians 2.11b. And I'm like, well, not really, because there's 240 countries, if you include all of the island nations. If you don't, there's 195 countries. And it ain't affecting all countries yet. I mean, people are aware of it. But, um, you know, so we we have entered into the global scope arena, uh, particularly as it applies to the four seal where it says where it's talking about World War Three and it's talking about, um, um, you know, behold, his name is, you know, death and a quarter of the earth will be affected by death, which is all the developed countries. Really, if you look at the demographic Mm -hmm. layouts of of the of the earth, which, of course, who would be involved in World War Three? Is Namibia going to be involved in World War Three? Why would they be? Is the Ivory Coast going to be involved in World War III? Why would they be? But is Russia, is Denmark, is Amsterdam, is, you know, is it going to be? Yeah, the developed countries that are already part of NATO, you know what I mean? So we're, it just seems like really when you look at it from the throne room perspective and you just divorce yourself, you say, hey, man, Philippians 3.20 says that I'm a citizen of heaven. Colossians 3 3 says that uh, we're not supposed to pay attention to things of this earth. Well, it says it it says it differently. It says it says keep your mind stayed on things above and not on this earth. Right. So, you know, when you get all of that and you see all this stuff happening. And you see how many people are jumping on the bandwagon. I mean, it is. And then how amplified the emotional impact is to the passive watchers how many millions of people out there for example people ask me why am I adamant that Trump's going to get reelected because I believe this is going to backfire this is going to backfire on him this is what I believe and I have made predictions like this by the way for the last 10 years and 100% have been right the only time that I had to make a, a, an adjustment, and that adjustment came a year in advance, was that Trump was going to get elected because I thought that Obama was going to kick us into martial law. And I, I, I started to tell people it's starting to look like Trump's going to get elected about six months prior to his election. But I, I – right now, most people don't know this. Right now, they are taking – Reservations for the Oklahoma Trump rally. Mm -hmm. They have received over 370,000. 370,000 requests to attend the Trump rally in, in Oklahoma. I believe that God is going – he's using this to awaken people, which is very clear. And he's using – he's going to – I think that we're going to see a priest of Baal moment, if you know that story, where Elijah came out and humiliated the priest of Baal with the wet wood, the fire. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see a priest of Baal moment because – mainly because – I'm not saying that that's going to stop the protest. I think it's going to accelerate them. Get it? There's a reason why Bill Gates, the king of ID 2020 and all things reptilian, mm-hmm. 
There's a reason why he... See, he's not ready to push out ID2020 because it's got to be globally accepted. I've had this conversation with a uh, senior pilot on of uh, Southwest, my brother-in-law. You can't solve... You can't say, hey, look, everybody got to be inoculated with, the, with, a, with a vaccine or else we can't open up international travel on air flight. You can't do it. Every one of the 240 countries, well, even if you limit it to the 195 or the top traveled countries, they all have to be on board. Nobody agrees. Do you think a, a vaccine that was created in the United States would be accepted in Russia? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Do you think that a vaccine created in Wuhan would be accepted in America? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? International travel cannot open back up properly with it, with a with a virus that with an inoculation that was given to only Americans or only Wuhanese or only, you know, people from Namibia or whatever the case is. That's why Bill Gates is uni- uniting with Boris Johnson right now to continue to push the ID2020 campaign. Because if he doesn't get global buy off, it ain't going to work. Which, by the way, follows suit into my argument that God is going to allow a priest a ball moment. When Trump told everybody on the news that, every, that he was going to use the United States military to accelerate the vaccination to the American public, First off, A, that was an American inoculation only. It would not be accepted in Germany, Amsterdam, the United Kingdom, any of the other countries. Nobody would accept it. And the other thing is, the very fact that he got with Boris Johnson in the first place speaks volumes. He got with one of the largest developed countries in the entire world to try to convince them to join his club. He is nowhere ready to put out Luciferese and quantum dot, you know, um, uh, injections. He's not ready. The technology exists, but he's got to get buy off. It's got to be sold to all the countries. It's got to be global to Joy's point for it to work. We're not there yet. So when you put on your thinking cap and you look at all variables on a global level, we're not there yet. So I'm thinking my prediction, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, But I don't think Trump getting reelected is going to cause the protests to get less. I think it's going to accelerate the protest and the Soros Foundation, the Clinton Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the John Birch Society, the Tavistock Institute, the Committee of 300, the Rhodes Roundtable the Brotherhood of Satan, the Illuminati, and the Board of Shapeshifting Directors of Satan himself are going to say, game over. And that will explain why Bill Gates in 2016, May, roundabout, came out publicly and stated that Donald Trump has the ability to become the next J. FK. That will explain why Donald Trump's largest public appearance in the history of the country was sitting in front of the Lincoln Memorial. There's only one thing that JFK and Lincoln have in common. Warning, Will Robinson. Stay tuned. Praise God. But anyway, um, Zen, you want to close with a prayer for us tonight? Sure. Father God, I just humble ourselves before you again in thanksgiving for all life and being and for our chances to warn people of those things that are coming. I do pray that they heed, listen, and do their own research to really make themselves aware of how they can protect themselves and their families from those things that are coming. And I also Pray, Lord, that they can see through the controlled opposition the false left-right paradigm and not get caught up in the madness of um, one or the other side and that they don't focus on the things of this world but the things of the kingdom and that they really seek you and come to know you as Savior Messiah 
and that eternity and salvation is through you. I pray that everybody wake up to the New World Order, Lord, and that they learn the agenda of those things that they are planning. And certainly I pray that none of them take willingly the vaccine that they are uh, creating right now. And and I, I do pray also, Lord, that you keep us safe and watch over us and help us to continue to do what we can to prepare those things, um, the people for those things that are coming to sound the watchman's alarm and to blow the trumpet and to continue our dedication to you and in our service to you. And we just thank you for your love and for watching and keeping us safe and just help us to do all we can to continue in discernment, to understand your gospel, to understand all that you have revealed through the prophecy of your apostles and the patriarchs of old. We just love you so very much. It's all for your glory, all for uh, just those that are less fortunate, those that are needing, Lord. uh, Pray everybody is taken care of in the times that are coming. In your name, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joy, thank you. So much for joining us again tonight. I love it. Getting all these different perspectives, it it rounds off a lot of speculation and kind of centers us in, um, you know, because we don't really know, to Zen's point, what's real and what's not, what's contrived, what's false flag. It it used to be you could deduce it relatively well, with some accuracy, that was that had a high level of likelihood of being correct. But nowadays, we've got insanity. I mean, the Aurora shootings, the six police officers in Colorado Springs, the Pulse Club shooting where there were reports of over five shooters, San Bernardino where there were reports of over a half a dozen um, military-clad black ops personnel getting into um, Tahoe's. Um, you don't even Vegas. get me going on the Jason Aldean concert in Los, Los Angeles right. and that lie. That was a lie. I mean, it was unbelievable. Right. We're being played everywhere we look. It's a play. It's Wag the Dog. It's the movie Wag the Dog. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, it's Satan, and we know what he's called. He's the trickster, and we're living Fine. it. I know. I I Amen. tell people he he pees on every tree, every leaf, every branch. He has no original <laughs> idea. He hijacks everything that God has created. I mean, you know, right. it's unbelievable. Well, anyway, praise God for you joining us tonight. Thank you so much. Another excellent and very thought provoking program as always. God bless you, and we will see you this uh, Wednesday night, Lord willing. God bless you all. It'll be Robert Vandrius Mitchell joining us. All right, thank you all for joining us. God bless you, and thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy, so much. Love y'all. Yes, good love night. y'all. Be blessed.